Okay, so the Epo Maker EP84. This is arguably the best 75% keyboard on the market, but I'm going to describe this keyboard to you the exact same way I described it to a friend of mine. The Epo Maker EP84 is the Tiago Alcantara of 75% mechanical keyboards. Basically what that means is all the basic things it does with so much elegance. There are no bells and whistles, but it gets the job done. In this video, I'm going to tell you all my thoughts about this keyboard and why I absolutely loved using this keyboard. Might sound strange, but I'd give my life for you. Nothing's changed, I just ran away from the truth. Okay, so this is a 75% mechanical keyboard, no Bluetooth, it's a wired gaming mechanical keyboard, full RGB with about 19 RGB effect, and you basically get the squeezed 75% form factor that has 84 keys that we've seen on so many other keyboards before it. You get N key rollover and this board is actually odd swappable with get around switches only though. So if you have other get around switches lying around and you want to change your switches for whatever reason, you can absolutely do that anytime you want. But I think we might be getting ahead of ourselves here. So let's actually talk about the unboxing experience and what you actually get in a box with this keyboard. So you basically get a giant black box with the Epo Mega logo on the front. And when you actually open up the box, you're basically going to get the keyboard itself wrapped up. Besides that, you're going to get like a manual that basically tells you all the functions of the keyboard. And you also get the cable. It's basically a USB-C cable. It's not braided, it's not super high quality, but it works. It's not a cable that feels like it will get very easily damaged, so it's a decent cable. Beyond that, you're also going to get the odd swap tool and you're going to get a wired keycap puller. Moving away from the unboxing to the physical bits of the keyboard, the board itself is actually mostly plastic, actually all entirely plastic. And when you do try to flex it, it does have a little bit of a flex, but it's not the kind of flex that feels like you might break the keyboard if you flex it too much. So it's still really sturdy for a plastic keyboard. Now, since this is a completely wired keyboard, there are no switches or anything to flip anything on or off. It's basically just plug and play. You plug in the USB cable and you're good to go. On the back of the keyboard, you basically get four adjustable rubber fit that do a great job of helping you keep the keyboard on your desk so it doesn't move around too much. There's also the two adjustable feet on the back that you can basically pull out to basically raise the incline of the keyboard. But in my experience, this actual incline that you get with using this raised fit is very unergonomical and it basically hurt my wrist. So I would advise you to just use the keyboard laid flat. It looks better, it feels better, and it actually functions better that way. Now, one very important thing to note is the fact that the USB-C port for this is actually reseated. So you are going to have to use the included USB-C cable because it has like a latch that you have to use. And if you basically already have like braided coiled USB-C cables that you use, this might be a deal breaker for you, honestly. There is also routing channels on the back so that you can route your cable through the middle, through the left, or through the right as you wish. But just to be clear, finding a USB-C cable replacement that's similar to the USB-C cable that was included in the box is not at at all. It's very, very similar to almost every USB-C cable that I have, honestly, for every phone and every mouse and basically every other device. Now, this keyboard basically gives you 19 extra RGB effects and I basically just left mine on a pulsing effect and I pretty much never touched it again. I mean, we're not kids. That's not why we're here. And speaking of my actual unit, my personal keyboard came with Gateron Reds, even though that doesn't matter much since I can just odd swap and use pretty much any other Gateron switches that I wanted. And the keycaps on this keyboard are actually die sublimated PBT and they actually still manage to keep the pass through for the RGB and backlighting, which I thought was excellent. Also, the font is not so terrible. Although there were no replacement legends included for macOS, even though this keyboard says it supports macOS, which it does, but you're still going to have to be staring at that Windows key all day. And speaking of the stabs, the stabs on my unit actually came pre-lubed and clipped and they were just fantastic honestly. Typing on this felt like a breeze. I did not experience any rattling, especially on my spacebar. It was fantastic to type on. Look, this is actually a very, very easy conclusion to come to. So before I actually give you a typing sounds video so that you can actually listen to what the keyboard sounds like in all of its glory, I want to give you my final verdict first. This, and I'm saying this with all my full chest, if you'd like to tackle me in the comment section, go for it. 
This is the best 75% keyboard on the market, period. It's better than the Keychron K2 with the fancy knobs and the switches and the Bluetooth. It's better than the Akko 3084, even the Retro or the Silent. It's better than every other 75% keyboard that I have ever used. And this is the least feature filled of all those keyboards that I've mentioned. Sue me. So, enjoy this quick type test. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you on another video that was shot by Kagan. Peace. Ah!